But what I think people don't understand about you, bro, is uh, you've been dealing with pressure for a long time. You know what I'm saying? In high school, man, you know, going back to Boone, you know, you were a dual sport athlete, successful on the track, successful off the track. And that can come with so many different pressures in one area. Going back to those times, man, as you reflect on those times, bro, what was that like handling that situation, right? Because you're having everybody who wants a piece of you, but then you got to keep yourself grounded away from the track as well, too, away from the football field. What was that like? It's funny that you bring that up, man, because I was just having this conversation with the guy who was my coach in high school. And I was trying to tell him, like, he wanted me to be basically, like, so militant in my mind. But he mm -hmm. didn't understand. Coming from me, man, like, my dad died. My dad was killed by a police officer when I was 10. Long before all this, you know, Black Lives Matter movement and all of this, defund the police book. You know, long before all this stuff ever existed, my daddy lost his life to a cop running. Got shot seven times in the back. You know, I was yeah. 10 years old. My mom had me as... I had my mom had my mom had me. She was at sixteen. She was sixteen, and she had my little brother at one. So my dad's dead. His dad's dead. Yeah. So a mother of two, you know, uh, 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 she's a mother of two by the age of twenty-one. You know, Section Eight, food stamps, wick, shit like that. So those are my circumstances growing up. And for me, man, I saw her never fold. Like I, I watched this lady stand strong in the toughest of times. And so when you see that, especially from a woman, mm -hmm. it's like. That was instilled in me without her having to actually put it in me i just yeah. saw it so it was what i saw so when i got to high school you know i come from the hood to go into the one of the whitest of high schools in orlando florida and it was a culture shock but then when i became you know when i went from marvin to being marvin bracy you know like you said it came with so much pressure you know being a two-sport athlete now i'm looked at as a savior like you know i gotta take care of that. <laughs> yes. i got family yeah. to take care of you know what i'm saying and so, but at the end of the day, it all came so fast, man. And people that don't understand athletics or don't understand sports have never been in this realm. Like, they don't understand that, bro. Like, yeah, you love the fact that you're a talented athlete, but sometimes you still just want to be a regular person. Like, I want to be a regular high school kid and, and, and enjoy spring break and, 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 you know. Stay up dude, all night, and, eat chips, be just be just be watching movies, just be chilling. I to eat bad food. I wanted to do all that, but it was like, man, I had to, you know, but then on the other hand, I wanted to be the greatest high school athlete of all time. Yeah. You know, so it was like, man, I had to find like a balance, but there really is no balance because one has to suffer for the other to prevail. Like it just, it, you, gotta, you gotta sacrifice something. Mm -hmm. And it was time, you know, because I went from, like you said, I went from playing football. Football started like July, August and ended like early December, late November, early December. Mm -hmm. And, you know, high school track really starts like late January, early February. Yeah, right away. And then, you know, I was doing summer track and USATF events and stuff like that. So all that stuff goes through June. You know, then come back again in July and do it all over again. So it's like, I never really had time to just, you know. Breathe. So it was like, yeah, yeah I do this. You gotta go do that. You gotta go do that. So it did come with a lot of pressure, man. But it's like, it's it's the price of fame. It's like, at the end of the day, how bad do you want it? And I realized that I wanted it, you know, bad enough. So I made the the, the conscious decision to sacrifice being a normal high school athlete, a normal high school kid to become a phenomenal high school athlete, you know, and it took me to college. And then after one year of college, I realized, man, I don't got to be here. Like I went pro at 19 years old. I saw one of these. I was like, I'm out of here, man. Man, you know, it's, it's, and before we touch on that college part, because man, that right there is remarkable by itself, man. But, you know, when you are seeing certain things happen in your life, right, you know, you see your you know, you see what happened to your dad and your mom. You know, my mom had me when she was 19, right? So the situation was, you know, she was working three jobs. So I rarely saw her, you know what I'm saying? But she taught me, she taught me a lot of invaluable lessons without actually teaching me. But then you're still stuck in kind of this place of isolation, man. Um, but I remember I made a decision one day, man, where I said, um, every time that I come into this house, I'm going to be some, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be something different. Didn't necessarily know what that looked like, but I made a promise to myself, man, during those times, bro, obviously, you know, there's still stages that you have to work through speeds that you have to get to, man. But how, what did you envision during that time, man? Like, like what, what, what kept you level headed to say, man, I may not want to make the sacrifice today. I may not want to do this. But I, if I do this, I can get here, man. What was that vision like at that age during that time? Man, you know, growing up, seeing my circumstances, like, you couldn't actually tell me that I didn't know how much we didn't have until, like, I got to high school. And, well, I started becoming, I became a good athlete in high school. And I started hanging around, you know, all the, you know, the wealthier white kids, you know, that on the team and stuff like that. And I started to see, like, damn, wait a minute, y'all, y'all. <laughs> 
I ain't, bro. I listen. The first time I ever lived in a house, I was twenty years old, and I got it for myself. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute, y'all live in a house? you got your own room? Wait a minute, that's a that's a garage. You know what I'm saying? Just seeing stuff mm -hmm. like that, it's like, man, like I'm like, oh, so okay, how you? Okay, so this is how you get. To, okay, so this is how you get to that. And so every time I wanted to, you know, do some normal high school stuff, it was like, man. But I want that though. I want this in my family. You know, so I want to live. You know. I don't know. I got my, my son is on the other side of this door, you know, probably in there sneaking playing YouTube because he doesn't see me that. You know, I can't I can't hear it. So I know he's doing it's quiet, he's doing something he got to do. doing something, man. I know but what I doing. always made a promise, man. I knew a long time ago that I wanted kids, you know what I'm saying? And I made a promise to myself and to them before they were ever born that y'all will have everything I never had. Mm. I actually got started on that early because my little brother is 14 years. Well, he was 14. I was 19, he was 14 when I went pro. He moved in with me. So his freshman year of high school, and he's lived with me ever since. He's 22 now. be 23 this year. He's lived with me, you know. And, um, I, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I made a promise that I'm going to give him everything I never had. And also, I was doing, you know, my mama a favor because that's less money she's spending in her own household with him because now I got it. So just for me, man, like, wanting to give my family that life, the life that we you know that we, I feel like we deserve, is what kept me going, man, because it's like, it's like I, I, I can't fail. And that, that type of mentality is what got me through this whole stomach situation. It was like, man, I, I can't, this can't, I can't, I can't, I can't let them down now. Like, I feel like I'm let, even though, you know, they probably wouldn't look at it as a letdown. To me, I feel like I let y'all down because, you know, I, I'm, 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 I feel like I was destined for greatness, man. Bro, I'm I'm a, down. Man, bro, I'm a, I'm gonna tell you this from now, bro. And this may not be something that you may, you may understand it when you're out of it, but there is no way that you could have let them down, bro. You have over exceeded expectations already.